Um, what is your feeling on zoom lenses in general in today's world? They're extraordinary tools, and, and especially uh, with the trend to put more and more cameras onto remote heads and put more and more cameras onto cranes, uh, the ability to have a zoom just gives the cinematographer so much flexibility. Uh, they unfortunately get a bad reputation that I think dates way back to the introduction of the zoom and like any new tool, they get overused creatively. And there's a there was a bad reputation for the uh, quality of yeah. the zoom lenses that didn't come up to the quality of prime lenses. That doesn't exist in modern lenses, even starting with the Veritals, where they are matching and on par with the quality and the ability of prime lenses. So this weird historical uh, bad reputation just is fallacy. Um, Zoom lenses are wonderful, powerful tools. And it's really, really nice to have zoom lenses with character because far too many modern zooms are too clean or too pristine. Yep. Uh, so to be able to look at Veritals, to get back to that beautiful character of those original lenses is phenomenal. And be able to contend with the larger formats. So yep. yeah, that's been a big, big thing for me is like if I'm shooting something that's heavily imbued with a look like uh, a commercial or something, and then I'm doing car work, and I have to throw a zoom on for for the sheet metal, and finding a lens that gives me the flexibility to shoot quickly on the road, and I have to change from primes. That's just impractical, but that has the quality that I'm looking for, that vintage quality, but it's covering the format. That's been the struggles. Like you know, first initially uh, with the the jump to try to everyone to, to, to knee jerk reaction and create sets of primes that cover full frame was the first step, and then having uh, um, a zooms that cover full frame and Again, the, the impetus is like to create as well of, of a performing uh, lens as possible. So you got like the premieres and stuff from Fujinon and that sort of thing. But then, or, or Optimos for that matter, but um, then to have enough sort of, uh, of leeway to say, okay, we've got well-defined, well-corrected zooms for full frame covered. Now let's create something that's a little bit more niche and specific that has a quality to it, has a, an emotional uh, component that, um, is going to imbue your your image with it, and that's what I'm looking for always. Is like, uh, you know, is again casting the lens to the project. So, what is the contrast? What is the tonality of the project I'm looking for? So, I'd be looking at my sheet, going, mm, this one feels much more like a, a Koa Promenar. It feels like, like 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 that to me. And what would be a good zoom that would correspond to that? Because actually, Koa Promenars, the coatings were like these single layer amber sort of mag fluoride. Um, and actually, with the, the, the Koa Promenars, they're in the 60s. They were kind of companion lenses to, to Baltars and, and BNC cameras. Um, they actually flare almost like a zoom lens. You see each individual element. And so it's, it's, it's kind of like the, uh, the zoom lens of primes in terms of the flare. So you could actually cast a really interesting zoom that would, that would couple with that in a nice way. To the old Angelo Tinto one, right? Yeah, something like that, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but then again, I'm casting the look into the actual optic, and that's doing a lot to generate the, um, the signature of whatever project you're creating. And that's all based on the story and the emotional core uh, of what I'm thinking the look should be in it goes right to what you're putting in front of the actual imager, whether it be film or, or, or a digital camera.